Colin Cattell with Palisade Radio. Here on the line with us today is a new guest, Paul Ogilvy. Paul is an expert in the graphite space and is currently Chief Executive Officer at St. John Carbon. Paul, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Colin. Just to give our listeners some background, you were monumental in the success of Canada Carbon and Northern Graphite, and you were the founder of Mega Graphite. You now have a new company, St. John Carbon, but we'll get back to that in a bit. How did you enter the graphite space, and why have you decided to focus your attention in this niche sector? We got, um, I think in early 2006, we had an opportunity um, as an investment group to invest in industrial minerals, now known as Northern Graphite. And uh, we found it quite interesting because at the time, back in 2006, it was really unknown, but there was so much talk about the applications for the material as far as technology. And because we came from, a t- our, my team had come from a technology and engineering background, we found it quite intriguing that a material it had uh, you know, infinite uses in just traditional things like grease and lubricants and, and that sort of stuff. Yet it was also going to be used in multiple all-new technologies. And, and we found it very unique, and we still today find it very unique, that very few materials, raw materials, come along and have multiple purposes. You know, they die off and a new material gets developed, so they don't use the old material. material. But very rarely do you find a material that literally... Um, has all its traditional applications are still intact today, yet almost all of the new applications for technology, whether it's graphene or lithium-ion batteries, is now using the material also. So you're getting material that easily could, um, from a million tons a year now, could easily be four or five million tons of, of demand in the future. So that's the main reason. What are the different type of graphite material sizes and qualities that investors should know about? All graphite, all investors should know for sure that all graphite is the same, whether it's amorphous, flake, lump graphite. It's all carbon at, a, at, a, at an atomic level. It all looks the same. I mean, the crystallines and amorphous are a little jumbled up, hence the term amorphous. But really, it, it's all flake graphite in, in the end. The difference, the main difference is being um, in purity, quality, and size. Flake graphite, you typically would think of as sort of a higher purity than amorphous, uh, typically a larger size, you know, plus 35, plus 50, um, large size material, where in the amorphous, you start getting into stuff that's sub 100. And in lump graphite, you know, lump graphite and flake graphite are basically the exact same thing. They're identical. Um, One, a lump graphite is just in a high-grade, super high concentration of material in a vein. And when you think of flake graphite, like northerns, for example, very high-quality material but disseminated over a larger larger area of land. So you end up with a lower grade, but again, a high-quality material. Ultimately, the pricing for graphite, again, because it's it's an industrial mineral, it's not really published or indexed like gold is, but it ranges from as low as two or three hundred dollars a ton for very low grade uh, amorphous graphite to eighteen to two thousand dollars a ton for very high grade flake graphite and every and every variable in between because a customer may want um, the material very specific size may want the material blended with something um, or may want the material just as it basically you know was ground and floated and you know it's ninety percent carbon and, and they can use it in lubricants that sort of thing. Now the most important thing about the different types of graphite is really the origin or what we call the signature mine, where the material came from. Our experience has been with our sales and marketing guys that a large percentage of the, 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 the graphite properties out there, the materials could have issues with them that the clients and doesn't suit the customer. I mean, uh, industrial minerals have to be sold, so you have to have a customer for them. And the customers, it's not just you can just take any old graphite and replace it with, with your graphite. Your graphite has to meet a very specific signature and a very very detailed specification. So it's always good for investors to, when they look at it and they're looking at the different types of graphites and understanding that it's a, it, it's a varied um, and very distorted material from one extreme to the other, from very poor quality to very high quality and to everything in between, and it has to be customer-specific. And you touched on how graphite has several applications. What are the largest uses of graphite today, and how do you see this changing moving forward into the next few years? Well, the largest use is is mostly in the steel industry, and it's just because it's used in the steel. um, It's used to make crucibles to pour steel in. It's used in the foundries. um, In the lubricants, it's used in in, in tremendous volume because heavy greases and that sort of thing have the material. I think in the future, the, if you look at almost every industry in the world uses graphite from 
the hinges on your door, that little black dust you see is graphite, to the lubricant in the lock on your door, to every piece of steel that's in your, you know, in and around you that you can see has got has graphite has played a part in the manufacturing that. Um, those industries will always continue and will be there for a long time. We see things like um, the battery business, not just lithium batteries, but the continue, and we're not talking about batteries necessarily for cars, we're talking about for energy storage. As energy storage becomes more and more, um, as we're getting to 2015, uh, not 2015, but rather 2017, 18, 19, and 20, um, the, the demand for graphite um, for batteries, um, not lithium ion batteries, but um, if we want to use lithium ion batteries, but for mass storage, um, the demand in that category will be fairly significant. There are also all sorts of all different applications. Water filtration. Water filtration is becoming such a, a big business around the world for cleaner water. Use graphite, um, very pure graphite to, to filter water. Um, Applications like graphene and uh, battery films that you would see on on you know big buildings being built, those are all things that are pretty far out there in the future that it's yet to be proven whether they'll actually be able to produce in mass, and if they were, how much graphite would you really use? It's more of the uh, true um, industrial applications like energy storage is the, is, is the largest space that we see growing in the future. Moving over to the investment side, a couple years ago graphite garnered a bunch of attention and the space quickly went from only a few companies to well over 50. A lot of mm -hmm. investors struggle with understanding what makes a graphite play successful. Um, what should they really be looking for with a graphite company? Well, I think they have to look to see if uh, the management really understands the business. We like to tell people that you know it's not a mining company, it's a sales and marketing company. Um, and 80% of the efforts have to be put into sales and marketing. Having a graphite claims and having a little bit of graphite or a lot of graphite is really quite academic. What's the most important thing an investor needs to know is, is that graphite quality there that a customer will buy it? And what most companies in the industrial mineral space do, not just graphite, sand, gravel, silica, whatever you want, um, is first produce a sample material, um, get it up to customers and see if the customer even wants to buy it. Once they find that a customer wants to buy it, they figure out how much the customer will pay. Then go back and figure out how much it's going to cost you to get it out of the ground. Once you have figured out all of that, then you go figure out how much you have. Because typically, it, there's not a shortage. You know, when people um, drill out, you know, their, their graphite properties so they can prove they've got hundreds of years of, of graphite that, that really have no importance. It's an industrial mineral, so... For sure, like a gravel pit, there's going to be lots of gravel. And if you hunt places that graphite, you know, graphite's carbon. It's everywhere. Um, it, you can go just about any property and drill a property and find graphite. It's really, I think, uh, I, I always recommend to investors or when analysts call me and talk to me, I always say find out about the quality of the material first. Make sure the quality's there and make sure somebody wants to buy it. And is the company really, truly customer-centric? And are they, do they understand the graphite business? And talk to me about your newest company, St. John Carbon. It's a new name, some exciting news releases have just hit the wire in the past couple of weeks. Give our listeners mm -hmm. the full rundown of what you have going on. Well, the, the main thing that we're working on uh, for the company is uh, we're, we're very much in the lump graphite space. Um, uh, after years of experience, we've, we've really narrowed it down to that. That's the place to be from a competitive uh, cost advantage because the cost per ton to get it into a, into a truck is significantly less than any other material and the quality of the material is off the charts. So our, our move came on, our, this is our sort of our, we think our final graphite project was really to build a company that would have an extremely low capex. Um, lump graphite um, has very, very low capex because of the extremely high grade. As you can imagine, when your grades are in the high 80s to 90s, your uh, amount of ore uh, or, or waste material is very, very little, so it's very easy to cart it, very easy to mill it, and get a lot of material out for very inexpensive. St. John Carbon is based on a few different corners. One is having the best lump properties in the world. We believe our properties in southwestern Quebec and our properties in southwestern Sri Lanka represent historically the best past producing mines in the world for lump graphite. That's peg number one. The next peg in our business plan is to have revenue and to have revenue in 2014. Now, obviously, we're going to try everything we can to get our, our graphite uh, in Sri Lanka up and out of the ground as quickly as possible, but um, uh, it might be a bit zealous to think that we'll, we'll get too much out of the ground in 2014. 
So one of the other things that we're doing strategically is we've started to acquire, and we plan on acquiring quite a few more businesses um, that already have revenue, um, one that uh, is about $2 million a year right now. Uh, we have a um, distribution agreement with a, a Chinese synthetic graphic company, and we've got a few other exciting things. So one of the other pegs in our business is to have as much revenue. I, unfortunately, I can't tell you what the, the revenue number is. We're working on forecasts, and that will be announced to the public uh, collectively and through a press release, but um, is to get a significant amount of uh, revenue in through 2014. And that actually answers sort of the third side of the company, and that's from a, both a technology and customer side. By having early revenues and being with customers right now, because we're actually selling right now and trying to get deals done right now, we figure it gives us a big leg up on everybody else in the business because we're actually communicating with the customers. We're learning how to sell to them. We're learning about what their needs are and the demands are. And St. John Carbon is really all of that. You know, its goal to be the world's best lump graphite producer to be the first out of all the different graphic companies to actually have revenue and realistically have a chance of being a very sustainable business in the future. Paul, we appreciate you taking the time to be with us today and sharing your knowledge on the graphite space with all of our listeners. You're very welcome.